Hey folks and welcome to another Sasoy spike boarding demonstration tutorial and today we're really excited to present to you with Sasoy, the help of Sasoy and the skateboard spike and spike boarding gear, the very first rails to trails spike boarding video. So rails to trails is one heck of a public works program in this country. It is the conversion of old rail trails, old railway um, lines that are taken out because obviously all of the excavating and engineering to make the land flat for the train had existed and how much sense does it make to go ahead and turn it into a recreational path? Well, it makes a lot of sense, guys. And um, of course, it's happened all over the country, and you're looking at none other than um, uh, the Ulster County uh, Hudson Valley uh, Rails to Trail system, and we just put in at Centerville Station, and we're going to go down to the High Line Station. For us, it's approximately um, 16 minutes or so in each direction, and we're going to stop there, and we're going to go over the walkway bridge a little bit so you can see that uh, the walkway bridge is concrete so we will just switch kick it means that we cannot engage our spike and folks if you haven't seen any videos uh, in spike boarding what you're seeing is simplified cross-country roller skiing and our spike tip is manufactured by a dozen ski companies and it's put on the bottom of cross-country ski poles and our Olympic athletes and our world-class uh, World Cup athletes use that same little two centimeter spike at the bottom of that shaft on their ski poles and what you're seeing is a simplified form of cross-country skiing so um, even locally uh, the, um, the Kingston High School and the New Paltz High School and if you keep going up into Glen Falls area all those schools have cross-country skiing and all those athletes uh, in the off season, they roller ski, and they would be uh, getting on paths like this using um, uh, ski poles. And you're watching a simplified cross-country skiing technique uh, that was in innovated in 2010. And primarily, you're seeing two strokes. So when the athlete has uh, his feet on the deck, uh, that's called stand-up spike. And when he's kicking and spiking simultaneously, as he is now, that is called a kubi cross stroke. So waist down, skateboard kick, scooter kick, one and the same. Waist up, cross country ski kinetics, exactly the same. So arms at 90 degrees, engagement of a core, engagement of the lats in the back, quick return, focus on efficiency and technique, extracting power from the body, forward propulsion. And uh, it's an endurance based sport and of course uh, to practice uh, one of the best places uh, is uh, rails to trails or a closed path or maybe even a parking lot there's an inside kubi cross holy cow we forgot we put this on the video that's an inside kubi cross and notice how the leg was in between the support leg and the skateboard spike there's the kubi cross and uh, that was an inside kubi cross folks so it lets you switch legs while the spike stays on the same side of of uh of the board and there we have there, there's the inside kubi cross again right so see how the skateboard spike is on the outside of the leg and the leg is in between the support leg and the skateboard spike it's good when you need to carry stuff home or if you have a uh, shoulder arm injury an inside kubi cross uh, and continue on your way with the sport beautiful pictures here amazing uh, canopy that goes over the rails to trail and of course we're being filmed by a bicycle uh, a little GoPro uh, underneath the saddle of a bike and so that gives you an idea of the space that we occupy on the path uh, it's exactly the same as a bike about a shoulder width apart uh, but still, guys, uh, when you're out on paths, um, make sure that you understand everyone else is sharing the path with you. Um, so make sure to never be a threat to others um, first, and then make sure that you are safe as well. 
Uh, but if you can't uh, safely control your spike boarding equipment, then you've got no business being out here. So when you see people, um, reduce your speed, even come to a complete stop. If you're a total beginner, you must be able to be respectful of all the citizens on the path and uh, remain in complete control. So there's a little stand-up spike over some uh, some crocodile um, pavement. Now, all the pavement isn't perfect out here by any means. Uh, perfect glass, but it's pretty darn good. Some places are a little rougher than others. Um, and of course, when that happens, uh, it's a good time to go into a stand-up spike mode. And you might be thinking, when do you kubi cross? When do you stand-up spike? So at one point um, in speed, uh, there'll be a moment that you can't you can't keep your leg cadence going. So arms can cadence at much higher speeds uh, than than legs. Choo choo! There you go. It's old remnants of the train lines. Um, so more or less up to about 18, maybe 19 miles an hour, and you can't really kick much faster than that. You can stand up spike up to maybe about 22, 23, 24 miles an hour, and that would be with a little bit of a downhill. Uh, here we're probably traveling, we're, we're going in between the two strokes, so obviously we're below 18 miles an hour. We must be hovering somewhere between uh, 13, 17 and a half miles per hour, more or less, um, the speed at which we're, we're going there. And you can see the combinations of strokes. Um, sometimes we one arm, that's one over two. There's the Kubi cross. And all these combinations of strokes we're going to get into making slow motion videos and describing uh, the hows, the whats, and so on and so forth. But there was the one over one, you just saw that, that's really nice to exchange into. Uh, there's the one over one, um, there's the kubi cross, so when the leg does not engage, that is when one arm and one leg are engaging in the stroke. There's a stand up spike stroke, and that is uh, both arms, both legs on the deck and it is the direct descendant of the double pole stroke in cross-country skiing. So as you can see, uh, there is no trick, there is no um, uh, defiance of gravity, there is forward propulsion and uh, the Newtonian principle of body in motion will tend to stay in motion. That is what you want to do and you want to stay tending to go forward exactly like a road cyclist, exactly like an inline skater, exactly like a cross-country roller skier, exactly like a swimmer. Um, this is not acrobat athletics. This is not radical athletics. If you're falling down, um, something is wrong in this sport. Unlike uh, radical and acrobat, in those sports, uh, you should be right at the line. You don't want to fall down, um, but you're probably going to have to be falling down a little bit if you want to be excelling at the sport of uh, radical and acrobat. So if you want to do tri triple axles and never fall down, I never met a figure skater that could do that. I've never met a skateboarder uh, that didn't push the limit uh, towards their uh, trick that they wanted to execute. And uh, that, of course, uh, involves falling down. It's the most normal thing in the world. Um, gymnastics is probably the uh, most mainstream uh, sport where um, you're a radical, you're an acrobat, um, and you're going to fall down until such time as you can get uh, perfect movements. And even then, um, you might get off balance and fall down. So um, people associate the skateboard with radical and acrobat. And in effect, uh, spike boarding, yes, indeed, uh, one must admit it is a form, a form of skateboarding because you're on a skateboard for goodness sakes. Um, but it also very much is a form of cross country skiing. And of course, it shares uh, uh, a mental state of being endurance. And um, uh, you're much more. Uh, associated and thinking along the lines of a cross-country roller skier. So uh, all the pavement's awfully sweet right here. Some places it's darn right glassy. It's really, really nice and uh, that's always a pleasure. Um, and we're just choo-chooing down this old track and from Centerville down to Highland there's a little bit of a pitch because we're headed down toward the river. Um, so uh, the way down is a little sled ride-ish uh, and the way back up is a little, a little more work. Uh, but as you can see from these pictures, um, the spike boarding on um, the rails to trail is absolutely sensational, guys. So um, 
this workout is uh, about an even uh, 50 minutes or so and it's absolutely a delight to get out here and do it. Um, there's no hills here and of course the essence of spike boarding is hill climbing. Make sure you tune in to many more of our videos in the local Ulster area and after um, you begin to dial in the sport um, you will be going um, doing rollers and um, you can find uh, beginner hills that have some uh, rollers and beginner hills and beginner beginner uh, spike boarding areas simply uh, are just places um, that don't have many cars um, and not much traffic. So when you get out on open roads, you really need to be able to uh, keep everything in control uh, quite a bit. So you might not do that till after year two or three. And even then, uh, it really is all up to how much uh, time you put into the sport and how well you can control it. If you saw back um, over that bridge uh, area, there's expansion joints out here, guys, and you need to um, really be respectful of expansion joints. Um, you need to let that front end float over, and you need to stay light at the rear of the board, and uh, maybe even just a tiny little hop um, as those rear wheels go over. So expansion joints should be respected, and if you have any doubts, just come to a zero stop and uh, let the board drift over, kick it over, and keep going on your way. So as you can see, again, a lot of glass out here, really nice glassy pavement. It's wonderful, really, really nice. And of course, under the canopies, uh, it's beautiful. There's a two over one. So there's a lot of combinations that can be done here um, in the stroke and uh, for hockey players uh, to strengthen condition uh, with this sport. Hockey coaches, if you're watching, uh, this is bilateral limb development, the kind that is going to really help hand-eye coordination, strengthen conditioning for hockey players, lac lacrosse players. And we're coming up here um, on a little underpass, and there was a little policeman uh, passing through here, so we're going to slow up, and then we're going to reach uh, a mom with her kids, and we stopped, and uh, there's going to be a little edit here. Um, we gave them a, a little 411 on spike boarding, and we hope to hear from them, and uh, hope to hear from a lot of parents um, who might, there we go, and we said bye-bye to them, and we kept going. They might want to hear about spike boarding and about how this sport is a uh, lifelong physical literacy. My goodness, look at how gorgeous this is. Thank goodness that they decided to use uh, rails to trails for recreation because wow, it just cuts through that, that beautiful rock. Um, and uh, what a sight, um, what an amazing, amazing rails to trail here in Ulster County. But how spike boarding uh, can really uh, be a physical literacy that is a twofer. And it's a lifelong twofer. And the first use, of course, is, hey, let's raise your strength and conditioning for your lacrosse for your baseball, for your football, for your hockey. Let's cross train. How? In the gym? Heck, if you want to go to the gym, that's really up to you. Uh, but <laughs> you can just go out and spike board with your buddies and you will have a very, very, very good time. And coach, I guarantee it, they're going to come back with higher elevations of, um, of um, stamina and higher elevated core and just general overall very high level of uh, strength and conditioning development when they come back to you for the regular season um, uh, activity. And of course, once uh, an athlete graduates from college, um, they have this physical literacy in their pocket and they don't need to learn it. So we're pulling into Highland here um, and uh, then we're gonna just do a little dissolve and uh, go on out to the bridge and switch kick there so you can see that a little bit and see how switch kicking looks with a safety one carry. Uh, there's uh, the beginning of a safety one carry. Oh, fly out over this bridge. There's the safety one carry. So the spike, the skateboard spike, um, stays right there, just floating right over the shoulder. And we're switching here. You don't necessarily need to switch. It's a little bit of an advanced move because obviously we're not engaging with the surface. Um, but we're just keeping the spike uh, where we can see it and we're pointing it towards the direction that is an open and clear path. So guys, if you haven't been on this footbridge, you'll want to get on this footbridge. It's absolutely beautiful out here. And there's a lot of expansion joints. 
Um, there's big ones and small ones. It's a very big expanse and in the winter uh, all of the material constricts and in the summer all of it expands. So it's a living, breathing, expanding uh, uh, bridge. Um, so expansion joints need to be uh, respected quite a bit. So we're, as, we, as we switch kick here, we're paying really close attention to them. So we're not gonna bore you with uh, our, our trip back across. So we went all the way up and now we're back um, here at Highland uh, Station and we're gonna pull out of here pretty slow because this is a master athlete, age 55 and um, warm-ups are important. Master athletics, guys, starts at age 30. So we grow up out of the ground, out of this good earth, and after age 30, we begin to grow back into the ground. And depending on what kind of load we apply to the body, um, we resist this uh, return to the earth. <laughs> and not only do we resist it, choo-choo, here we go guys, pulling out of station. Not only do we resist it, um, but we decide uh, how this mechanism that we own uh, will feel. And it's black and white, folks. It's black and white. You either apply load to every mechanism of your body. That means the cardiovascular, uh, also the muscular, the skeletal. Um, you either apply load to it or you don't. And uh, I don't know how you are applying load. Uh, if you're applying it at the gym, well, you know, uh, God bless you. Uh, I, we can't get to the gym. <laughs> just, uh, there's just, uh, we can get maybe one or two weeks in winter, but then there's just an inability to stick with the routine of, um, of weight resistance work, uh, sadly, even though it is so important for our good health. And so activities, activities really become that which um, uh, can become addictive uh, for so many people. Certainly uh, for us, it's uh, quite addictive. And so when you can get out and spike board and you know this language uh, very well, your strength and conditioning, uh, your strength, uh, your endurance, uh, your balance, in your bilateral limb development. The only thing you're missing here is flexibility. So uh, don't forget to stretch, guys. Let's get back to the little bit of what we're doing here on the way back up and what we're doing here. Um, our connector is connector drills and uh, connector strokes. So we're going seamlessly through the Kubi cross back to the stand-up spike. And notice how the skateboard spike staying on the same side. And what you'll notice is that the support leg is in the rear. So to pull off connectors, as you can see, the foot, your supporting, your supporting leg mechanism needs to be in the rear. Then you just drop that front leg and you go straight into the stand-up. And of course, then you can work both sides of the body really well. And it just is going to heat up that calf and heat up that glute and, uh, and uh, quadricep incredibly well. And when you do begin to dial this in, you'll begin to get the heel to toe uh, pretty good. Notice how that foot in the front isn't dropping completely straight forward heel to toe. It's just main it's dropping with a little bit of a bend in it, a little bit so that you can actually keep maintaining and steering the board. It's really hard to steer the board unless uh, you're riding uh, to the left and the right just a little bit. Um, and just a little bit, and there you go, it went totally heel to toe. If the pavement knows how you went heel to toe as soon as the pavement was really glassy. So as soon as the pavement's really glassy, then it's much easier to steer. There's a little carve uh, we did just because we were gaining speed on the bicycle. So that just, that just um, scrubbed a little bit of the speed. And these glassy sections are really nice uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, drills. Uh, so some people were coming down. Obviously, we had to slow back up, so they weren't singled up. They were all over the the the, the path. And folks, don't ever don't ever get upset when people are in front of you. Um, just pull back a little bit. There's always time to go do work. Uh, I don't care whether you're on a bicycle or inline skates or or anything like that. If if you're out here during, doing intervals. And, and you're shouting at people, get out of my way, you're, you, you've got the wrong idea. Um, so there's, there's, there's always a time to go hard, 
and um, it, it, it's not when uh, there's people in front of you and you're hollering at them. So be respectful of everybody on the path. And when you want to do work, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find a place to do work. And uh, people that really honestly go fast, they race. And people who race know that uh, to really open up an engine and go full out as hard as humanly possible, uh, you know, you need to have race conditions. Uh, and that means marshals, and that means uh, closed circuits, and insurance, and uh, promoters, and people around, and and uh, closed circuits. So um, please be respectful of, of everyone on the path. And uh, faster is not always better, and faster does not make right. So especially everybody out there on bicycles, we've cycled for many many years, and especially beginners uh, who think they're, you know. Uh, super speedos and you got the wrong idea so but mostly everyone we saw on this path today was incredibly kind and nice and uh, and uh, just share the road folks I guess is what I'm saying and here here are some uh, what are called alternates uh, so alternates happen uh, with uh, uh, with with uh, the feet and uh, um, you're just lifting the foot and putting it down back up all here on the front and uh, alternates and connectors are they're they're close to the same, um, but but not exactly. Um, uh, we'll go over all that in slow motion. We'll pull that all together. This video was just primarily just to show you uh, spike boarding in the Ulster County um, on a rails to trail, or spike boarding in good old U.S. of A. Um, on rails to trail. So rails to trails clear across the country, guys, and wherever you live. Um, uh, it's a fantastic way to begin to spike board. The only thing you're missing here is uh, is uh, hills, and of course the essence of spike boarding really is, is up hills. But hey, if you live in Chicago or Kansas or pan flat places, uh, the essence of all uh, road cycling is uh, you know time trials, uh, races against the clock, um, and of course sometimes races against the wind. All those who live up in the Chicago area. Um, you know, windy races, uh, those that those are your hills, so the wind is constant there. Uh, we've raced bicycles there and uh, a lot of echeloning going on there. Got to know what you're doing against the wind, um, and it's no joke either. So, uh, but Rails to Trail is pan flat, and therefore um, uh, you really can uh, focus on, on your rolling technique and also a good place to just do stand up spike as well. Uh, because spike boarding, uh, spike boarding, when we say we are spike boarding, is because you know your Kubi Cross, which you're looking at right there, is a kick and a spike, and it's bilateral on both sides. And um, and you know your inside Kubi Cross, and you know your stand up spike. You know the three strokes. That's when you're a spike boarding athlete. But if you chose to be a stand up spike athlete, that's okay. Uh, you might never you might never learn to switch kick, in which case you're not Kubi Crossing, you're just a stand up spike athlete. And uh, stand up spike, uh, which you're looking at right there, um, goes really well uh, with cycling. So you could go out for a stand up spike uh, from Centerville down to Highland and back, uh, knock that out in a, a good hour and 20 minutes or, or faster, however the case might be. And uh, then the next day, just go out and do some cycling. You're really, you're really going to enjoy that upper body. Cycling is uh, a little bit of a lopsided endurance sport. It's a beautiful sport. We love it. Um, we're actually blending it really well with cycling, and we're calling it velo spiking. So velo spiking is a wonderful multi-sport um, because it actually engages uh, the upper body. So, uh, folks, if you're only riding a bicycle, um, you're not uh, applying load. Uh, bearing weight to the skeletal structure so be careful make sure you get into the gym a little bit make sure you do some walking perhaps some running and if you are uh, averse to doing any of that like we are <laughs> go out and do some spike boarding and you'll be sustaining some uh, some body load and um, uh, some impact on the skeletal structure and that's a good thing that's a really really good thing also you're engaging your core and your, uh, your upper body um, uh, so you ride a bike long enough, you'll start getting a little bit of barrel chest and there's not much happening for the rest of your, your upper body. You're becoming a big endurance motor, so you're engaging your legs, but uh, you need to cross train when you're a cyclist. So uh, spike boarding, roller skiing, uh, these are very full body comprehensive sports. Also swimming, sadly swimming is also a, not a weight bearing sport, not a load bearing sport. So if you swim and you cycle. Uh, you better get out there and do some running or lift some weights or heck just do some spike boarding um, So here we're seeing a, a, just some straightforward Kubi cross and they're connecting straight into the uh, 
the Stand Up Spike Stroke. I wish I could give you a pill so that you could feel how delicious it is to go between both strokes. Um, Stand up spike stroke alone is 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 not is uh, not so bad. It's it's actually pretty good. It's so similar to double polling, and we know that in the classic races in in uh, skiing, it's double pole, double pole, all double pole. So sometimes we go out and do pure stand up spike. It's great, but if you're only uh, gonna kick, if you could only kubi cross, that would get uh, tedious. It really it really does. Um, so it's lovely just to take a little respite and, uh, and, and, and uh, dial in the stand-up spike in between uh, the, the kubi cross. And on pan flat, both uh, strokes, um, uh, especially pan flat with a little bit of uphill, are, can, are about the same speed. So it's really nice to alternate between the two of them and engage uh, the full body. Um, uh, in all of your propulsion. That's, that's one of the, the lovelier things about um, spike boarding compared to say endurance switch kicking. There is a small tiny sect of, of athletes who do switch kick uh, on longboards and uh, there's a small tiny subset sub, sub sect of people who actually race scooters and they're all over the world. They haven't really defined the name of uh, their sport very well. Um, they're on these big kind of super scooters, but guys, that's kind of a half a sport. So imagine cross country skiers just saying, hey, hands free skiing forever. We shouldn't be using poles and we're going to roller ski. Uh, cross country ski without poles wouldn't make much sense. So um, uh, spike boarding compared to switch kicking alone is absolutely divine. If for some reason or another you, you're watching this and you do switch kick, uh, try not to pass any uh, uh, um, judgment until you do it. If you roller ski and you're watching this, try not to pass any judgment until you've executed a good five, six months and really understood what it is that you are judging. But you haven't the slightest idea. So this athlete roller skis and I'm here to tell you that roller skiing is divine, it's lovely, it's a masterful uh, engagement of uh, strength, endurance, and balance, and it is mighty, mighty challenging, and inherently it isn't as uh, crazy fun as spike board. And of course, your feet are connected, you could cross your tips, and you'll get your ankles and your knees all locked up. And that's no big deal because roller skiing is definitely worth it. I'm not telling you not to roller ski. I'm telling you to roller ski. And the fact is, if you spike board, First, you're going to arrive at roller skiing uh, with a heck of a lot of development and um, a heck of a lot more understanding on how to engage the spike tip into the pavement. And you're also going to have a lovely sport to cool down in and to do rest in. So really serious uh, athletes who cross country ski should definitely know spike boarding because you're going to be able to commute casually. You could commute to school, you could commute across town to work and you can Fridays and Mondays you can just go easy so more than likely you're not doing that on roller skiing if you are let me know I'd love to I'd love to help promote your your commuting on roller skiing very few people commute on roller ski when I see people in mass writing me showing me videos showing me photos that people are commuting on a daily basis in roller skiing then I'll believe it so uh, but I don't think that's going on and there's a reason why because roller skiing is just not so casual and has a big logistical list that you got to pull out you got to say is the pavement clean uh, is all the rollout available it's very difficult to stop on roller skiing um, when I arrive where are my shoes gonna be so on and so forth and these things you just don't need to worry about when you're spike boarding folks we're, we're getting close here uh, to the end we're gonna pop out um, here at uh, Centerville again and um, uh, thanks so much for tuning into this video and watching. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I think I'm a little premature in exiting with my narration, uh, but we are getting closer and closer. Uh, it's the only second time I've watched it. Of course, uh, I, I was present when, uh, when, uh, when we made it as well. Uh, yeah, we're really close. There's the gentleman we passed just before we finished. And um, get out on this rails to trail, whether you just come out and walk or ride a bike. Um, definitely uh, get out and uh, walk down uh, to the footbridge because you, you will enjoy it quite a bit. So all you hockey uh, coaches and uh, field sport coaches, 
definitely consider spike boarding for cross training. Look us up and all you guys uh, who are in between high school and college, learn this sport. It's going to scale and it's going to scale and offer work and um, it's going to scale very, very large because that's a 55 year old athlete and the sport begins on a scooter and then with the skateboard spike begins at age five, about age seven, just like roller skiing. Um, and as it grows, it'll end up growing clear across the planet. And it's going to need a lot of people working in it. If you don't know a sport, it's very difficult to work into a sport. So if you know climbing, if you know traditional climbing, then you can work in the sport. If you don't, then it's very challenging uh, to actually work in it because you don't know what the heck it is you're talking about. So guys, grab your scooters as well. Make sure you look at our videos and see that all switch kicking begins on scooters. Just get some performance adult scooters. And um, anyway, tune in to our videos. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We're winding down here to the end. We're gonna pop out here of the frame. So spike hard, spike often, spike boarding, the sport of balanced strength, guys. So enjoy. And we'll see you at the next one.